Welcome. This video covers the basics of SAS programming. We'll talk about some of the common elements that you'll see in most SAS programs we end up writing. Before we do that, let's just talk a little bit about why we're programming. We oftentimes have some problem of interest, and we don't necessarily just want to use theory or sort of a gut feeling to decide what to do. And so what we do is we collect data relevant to that question of interest, and we try to make what are called data-driven decisions. By using data, hopefully what we do will have more backing to it. And most of the data sets that we look at will be of the form of what you might think of as a rectangular data set or a spreadsheet. And for instance, this would be a data set that we could think about. And what we do is we call these rows the observations, and we would call the columns the variables. Most of the time we're going to have one column or one row within our data set that represents column names as well. So these would be our column or variable names. The variables are the things that we actually measure. And again, we're going to measure these things on different observations. So we're going to measure them on different people or units, whatever that happens to be. For the purposes of this class, we can pretty much just think about data in its rectangular format. The question becomes, how do I actually make a decision with this data? So if I just had this data set and I looked at it, can I make some sort of conclusion about one of these variables or what's going on? And by just looking at it, probably not. What we need to do instead is summarize that data and analyze it in, analyze it in some sort of meaningful way. And really to do that, we need software and statistical software specifically. There's lots of different softwares out there. Um, some of them are point and click where there would be menus that would allow you to do say graphs and different summaries. Those might include things like SPSS, Jump, or Excel. But then there's also things that are called programming languages or programming software like SAS, R, and Python. Generally speaking, we much prefer to use a programming software because it allows us to um, sort of document the entire process of what we're doing. Whereas when you do point and click, there's no, usually no record of what you've pointed and clicked on to get the end result that you have. Let's just dive into why we prefer programming just a little bit more. So like I just mentioned, it's, this is going to allow us to create a reproducible workflow. So we're going to um, be able to document every step that we've done from reading the data in, manipulating that data, summarizing it, and analyzing it. By doing that, if, some, if I come back to this project six months later, I should be able to recreate exactly what I did and then move on from there. By doing this, it also allows us to automate the process. If I have the same kind of report that I'm doing every week based off of some weekly report or weekly data that comes in, I can try to automate that entire process through a program um, that I can just call up and run on that new data set. And hopefully this is going to improve efficiency and reduce errors in your um, point, pointing and clicking. Not only that, but it will allow us to um, put our, our analysis, whatever we're doing, right into a project pipeline. So a project pi pipeline is usually something that starts with data and ends in something that a user can use. And um, by using programming software rather than point and click, we don't have to stop that process when we get new data. We can just have that program in there and the whole pipeline can go. You might ask yourself, well, why do I want to choose SAS out of all the languages I could choose? Well, there are a lot of really useful things about SAS. It's widely used in a number of industries, especially in um, business and healthcare has a very strong foothold in those. And there are really great things about SAS, such as its strong customer support. Since you pay for a license when you have SAS, or your company does, uh, you get access to the, their customer support, and they will help you work through whatever problems you have. If you're trying to figure out an analysis for a particular, particular topic, they can help you work through that. Other open source languages, you have to rely on sort of the communities to help you out there. But one of the biggest things is the backward compatibility of SAS. There are SAS programs that were written in the 1980s or 1990s that still work today and give the exact same results. This is not true for things like R or Python necessarily. Um, definitely, um, this is a big problem in the R community. Dealing with uh, a package that you've loaded in from last year versus this year, you can get completely different results or have errors in your code. So this really strong backward compatibility is important in SAS. And not only that, but SAS results are reliable, so they've been tested and Basically, SAS has backed them up and said, the results you're getting here are what you should be seeing. Our programming is correct. Whereas if you're using something that's open source, there might be um, some packages in there that are user written, and they say they're doing one thing, but they don't actually do that thing. How are we going to use SAS in this course? 
We're going to use SAS to take in raw data, which is something like you might see over here. This would be called a space delimited file. And what we mean by raw data is it's just data that is not into our program, into our software yet. This is just some file that exists either on our computer or maybe on a server somewhere. And it has the data in it, but we are not able to analyze that data quite yet. We're going to learn how to read that data into SAS. You might call it importing the data. And once we have it in SAS, we'll figure out how to manipulate it, change it around so that we can get new variables and things like that. At that point, we'll be ready to summarize the data in meaningful ways and analyze it and communicate it to our audience. So exciting stuff here. Let's start with our basic programming ideas. When you're programming, instead of using point and click software, basically what you need to do is write certain commands or keywords that's, that are going to tell the programming language what to do. For instance, this is what we'd call a proc means step in SAS, and this is going to analyze some data. This is going to summarize data in some way. And uh, you can see that there are certain keywords that turn colors whenever you type them in, if you do it in the appropriate way. And then there's syntax involved as well that we need to make sure that we follow so that whenever we submit this uh, code to SAS to analyze, to run, it's going to actually know exactly what to do. And you might see some very common things like these semicolons. These end a certain SAS line. And there are things that we need, like an equal sign between the data uh, and the actual name of the data set. So this would be the name of our data set here. This is actually the cars data set in the SAS help library. We'll learn all about that in a little bit. And again, we're, what we're going to need to do is understand the syntax and these keywords well enough so that we can write code so that when we submit it to SAS, it's going to know what to do. Once we submit it, we should then see some output that's going to be useful for us. So in this case, by default, this proc means step is going to give us the output that you see here. The number of observations in our data set for these two variables, um, the means, the sam sample standard deviations, the minimums and maximums. Okay, so how does SAS actually work, generally speaking? Usually we have things called steps in SAS programs. These, are, these make up the bulk of your programs. We're going to have what are called data steps and what are called proc steps. Data steps are really great for doing anything that you want to do with data. This includes reading in raw data, creating and deleting variables, renaming variables, subsetting observations, and many more things. You can combine data sets and do all sorts of other stuff as well. We won't use it for reading in raw data for the most part. We'll use a proc to do that, um, but we will look at how to use a data step to manipulate our variables. Proc steps, on the other hand, are pretty much good for anything. Um, if there's something that you want to do with your data or to read your data in, there's usually a proc that can do that for you. So if we're going to use proc import, this is going to be what we spend our time on here in the first module, learning how to read in raw data using proc import. Um, proc SQL is really, really useful for handling data as well. And then we're going to learn all about these different um, procs that are going to help us manipulate data as well, such as proc sort. For creating summary stats like we just saw on the previous page, there are lots of different procs to do that. Um, we're going to look at all three of these, proc univariate, proc means, and proc freak. And then we'll also take a quick gander at doing some linear models, maybe some regression models and things like that. So down here is a another proc step. This is a proc univariate step. This is going to, again, create some summary stats for us. SAS steps are generally made up of what we call statements. A statement usually starts with a keyword and is going to end with a semicolon. In this data step we have down below, we have four statements. We have a data statement, we have a set statement, a where statement, and a run statement. Again, notice that each one of these starts with a keyword and ends with a semicolon. This is true for pretty much any step you're going to do. You're going to have steps that are made up of statements. Other general things that are going to come up in your SAS programs. Um, generally, when you're using a data or proc step, the data that you're going to create or use goes on that first line in some way. This may be an option that you're going to use in a um, proc. So again, we saw proc means data equal some data set. Proc univariate data equal some data set. So again, usually we're going to call the data set in that first line. In a data step, we do data and then specify the name of the data set that we're going to create. So again, this one 
here, this would be in a data step. So we're going to name the data to create. Each one of our statements ends in a semicolon. Uh, sometimes you'll get an error in your code. Oftentimes it's because we forgot semicolons. SAS code is not case sensitive unless you are in quotes. It doesn't matter whether you mix case or anything like that. Um, SAS code does not care. I tend to, when I do my coding, I put keywords and things like that as all caps. And then I do everything else in lowercase. But uh, you don't have to do that. You could use all lowercase D-A-T-A -A, to, to use data. And then we're also going to have other options that float around. So I mentioned that this, this uh, data equal was an option up here in a proc step. Um, this, or proc statement, I should say. Uh, there are also other options that are going to allow us to customize the output that we get. Um, and these are going to come in three different forms, generally speaking. Sometimes they just come after the proc or whatever. Sometimes they come after a slash. And then sometimes they're going to come in parentheses. So we just need to um, understand that how we're going to see these different options. And then each one of our steps, again, data or proc steps, are going to end with a run statement or a run statement and then a quit statement. And this just helps to tell SAS that this chunk of code is done. You should evaluate it and spit out some results. The other common component of a SAS program would be comments. Basically, any programming language you use, you're going to use comments to document your code, which just means that you're going to put a little note that tells you or somebody else who's going to read your code what this chunk of code is supposed to do. Otherwise, when you come back to your code six months later, you might be like, what, what the heck was I doing here? I don't even know. Um, and so comments are there to help you with that. Comments are things that are not evaluated when the program is submitted. So it doesn't really matter what you put in a comment. It doesn't have to follow any kind of um, format other than you have to start a comment and end it. So one way to start a comment in SAS is with a star or an asterisk, and then you just end that with a semicolon. Here's an example of a comment. Here, um, I'm going to use a data step to create a, um, a new variable called onBase that is sort of a onBase percentage, but not quite. So I have a comment up here that starts with a, an asterisk here and ends with our semicolon. And you can notice that SAS has turned this comment green. That's the common color used for comments. And again, when you submit this chunk of code, SAS is not going to evaluate that comment. So it doesn't matter what you put in there. It knows, oh, I'm going to skip over that. I do want to point out that um, this is a statement that is creating a new variable. And so this statement um, does not start with a keyword when we're creating a new variable. And so it is, uh, you should be careful, not every SAS statement is going to start with a keyword that's going to turn blue. All right, I think we are ready to jump into SAS and do our first SAS program. We'll just learn how to sort of navigate the SAS Studio IDE a little bit, and then we'll create a new SAS program, type up some basic code, and submit it. Here we are in our browser. Again, we're going to access SAS through SAS On Demand for Academics, so we don't have to install anything. You should just be able to go to SAS On Demand for Academics, log in, and then you should see a page like this. If you go over to Enrollments, again, hopefully you've enrolled in our course. That way you're going to have access to all of the different uh, materials that we share with you through that. But if you want to open up SAS, you just click here on SAS Studio. This will open up SAS Studio in a new browser, and then we can start doing some programming from there. And so SAS Studio will load up here. And uh, the SAS Studio IDE has uh, a couple main components that we'll cover in more detail in a future video here. But over on the left, we have a couple different menus that are very useful. We have server files and folders. This, is, these, this essentially gives you the different um, files that you have access to. Again, if you've enrolled, enrolled in our course, you should have a My Shared File links here that um, gives you access to some of the things that we've shared for this course. We're also going to utilize the snippets functionality down here, and the libraries um, menu will also be very important for us. Um, you may see a program over here when you first open up SAS Studio, or you may not, depending. If you want to open a new SAS program, you can go up here to these buttons and do new SAS program. OK, so here we are. We're ready to start doing our programming. And let's go ahead and um, start with some good programming practices. For any file, any SAS program that you would write, you want to start with a header. So a header of a file just tells you um, what that file's purpose is and then who the author is, generally speaking. 
And you might also put a date or something like that in there. So I'll just put Justin Post, um, first SAS program, and we'll end that. So notice that this is just one large comment statement. It starts with a, an asterisk, and then until it sees a semicolon, it's going to say everything within here is a comment. So if I try to run this code right now with this little running man, you can see it submits that code, but it doesn't execute it because it's a comment. So there's really nothing to do up there. Okay, and then we're ready to um, type in our first lines of code. Again, we're either going to be talking mostly in data steps and proc steps. We'll look at a couple standalone statements as well, but uh, let's start with uh, a data a proc step to just summarize some data. So there are built-in data sets over here. If I go to the libraries, this is where SAS stores its data. And there's a whole section of libraries, um, ones that are built in. SAS help has a bunch of built-in data sets. We'll just utilize one of those. So we're going to summarize the SAS help dot cars data set. You can see that data set uh, right down here. SAS help is the library. This is um, sort of the folder that contains all of these things in some sense. Uh, and then car is, is the data set. So in SAS, we access that through SAS help dot cars. The proc we'll use to summarize it is proc means. So we'll go proc means data equal. We're going to tell it SAS help dot cars is the data set that we want. And something we can provide for proc means are then which statistics that we want to summarize for that data set. I'm going to go with the mean, the median, and the standard deviation. And notice that um, the help here, uh, SAS help is popping up some help to aid us when we're coding. If I start typing ST for standard deviation, and I'm not sure exactly what the option is, it pops up some options that tells you what these do. So STD and STDEV are equivalent. And so you can use either one to do the standard deviation. I'll go ahead and just use this one. Um, I'm going to put a semicolon there to end that proc means statement, which is starting a proc means step. Uh, proc means can also take a var statement, which will specify which variables we want to um, analyze or summarize. In this case, I'll do engine size. Uh, if you click over here, you can see what the variables are. SAS stores its variables as either numeric or character, and you can see um, some little uh, icon here to help you understand what kinds of variables these are. So one, two, three means it's numeric. Something with an A here means it's um, a character variable. We are only going to summarize data, data that is numeric um, with means, medians, and things like that. So over here, I might choose um, engine size and horsepower to summarize. And again, um, SAS code is not case sensitive. So I can type engine as all caps and then size after that, and it's going to work just fine, and then horsepower. So that ends the var statement with that semicolon. And then I'll do a run statement. That's going to end our proc step. We can go ahead and um, hit the running man up here to submit this code. If you don't have a line of code highlighted, it's going to submit your entire program. Generally speaking, we don't necessarily want to do that. What we tend to do is we highlight the code that we want to submit, in this case, this proc mean step, and you hit that running man. You might notice that also when you hover over it, you can see that you can hit F3 if you want to just use a keyboard shortcut. Anytime you submit code, you should always check this log tab. Again, we'll cover this a little bit more um, in our next video. But the log tab is going to tell you whether or not um, your code ran successfully. If you ever see red or green here, that means there's either a warning or an error, and that's something that you might want to investigate a bit further. Here we see only blue, and so hopefully the code here did what we want. And we can go over to this results tab, and it will show us what we asked for. We asked for summarizations of engine size and horsepower. We get the mean, median, and standard deviation of those. All right, that's our first SAS program. One of the things that we want to do with programming, right, is um, keep this code for later use so I could recreate this exact same analysis. That means that we want to save this code somewhere. There's this save icon here. We can hit that. We can choose where to save it. Um, you're not going to be able to save in the My Shared File links. That is a folder that's only writable by me. And so you'll want to save this either just in your files home, or we'll see how to create a folder next time. But I'll go ahead and put it here in this folder. Actually, let's just save it in files home in this case. And we'll just give it a name, uh, Basics of SAS Program. We'll hit Save. And now we'll have that program for later use. All right, hopefully you're pretty excited about this uh, course and learning about SAS. We now have some of the basic elements of a SAS program down. We know that we have data and, SAT and proc steps. We know that these steps are generally made up of statements and that we have comments that we want to include as well.